This is a typical layout for a document library that is part of a SharePoint Online team site. On the left hand side we have the navigation for the team site, above which we have the search box. In the middle we have the documents that are part of the library and above that we have a menu with items on the left and also on the right. To work with files inside the document library all you need to do is select the file name. That will open the document, in this case it's going to open it with uh, Excel Online and allow us to view the information. We can then edit that document in a browser and we will see the familiar ribbon and we'll be able to go in and update the information in this file. Once we've updated the information that will be saved automatically into the document library for us and to navigate back there we just need to select the name of the team site in the top left hand side. In here we are able now to go in and also create new documents. You'll see that we have the ability for example to create a new Word document. Doing so will automatically launch into the browser, place us into edit mode, allow us to update the file with information. It will save that into our document library automatically for us. When complete we can again navigate back to the document library by simply selecting the name of the team site in the top left hand corner. Not only can we work on Microsoft files, we can also work on non-Microsoft files simply by selecting these and navigating to them. In this case, I'll open a PDF. You'll see that I get that displayed in a browser and I can view and enhance that file if needed. So we can work on not only Excel files, Office files, but also non-Microsoft files like we could in a on-premises file environment. So not only can we create new files, you'll see that we also have the ability here to upload individual files and whole folders. We can also choose to sync information from our desktop into this document library using the sync client as well. Now to work on an individual file, we can select that by placing a check mark to the left of the name of the file. You'll then see that the menu across the top changes to indicate a different focus. Here again we can open that in this case in Word Online as well as Word on the desktop. In both cases the information is saved directly back to the document library. We can elect to share this file using an email invita invitation that is crafted for us automatically once we've determined the permissions on that for our destination. You'll see that we also get the ability here to copy a link, so that will allow us to create our own email and just copy the link. We can download the file and we can delete the file and selecting the three dots here, you'll, we get a number of additional options. Now, not only can we get our file options by selecting across the menu at the top, we can also right mouse click on the file to display the options. One of the options is to pin to the top. That will basically take uh, a display of the file to the top of our document library to give us greater focus on that information. We can have a total of three documents pinned to the top of our document library if desired. Again, right mouse click to unpin that if we want. Now what we can also do here besides pinning to the top is you'll see that we get the ability to move a document to a different location. Uh, we can copy it as well. We can rename this if we want. So we give this a new name and you'll see that We've also got the ability to go in here and look at the version history. So every time we change a file or update it, it will create an automatic version for us and it will retain 500 versions by default. You'll also see that we get the ability here to set an email alert, which means that any time that file changes, we will receive an alert about that. Now with the file selected, we go over to the right hand side and you'll see that we get the option to open the details pane. The details pane will give us, for example, a preview of the file if possible. It will show us the properties and allow us to go in here and update any information on the fly. When we hit enter, it will save that information automatically for us. You'll see we can also see who has permissions, what recent activity there has been on the file, as well as get low level file information, including things like the size of the file. To get rid of the pane, all you need to do is simply select that. To unselect the file, just select this option here and that will clear your selections and allow you to work with the complete library in total. 
Now what we can do is by we select the column heading, you'll see that we can sort from one direction, we can sort in the opposite direction, we get a little arrow indicating which direction and we can again sort that depending on the column that we're after there. So that's easy to do. We can also add an additional column here. So in this case, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add a choice column. In this case, I'm going to call it customer and I'm going to provide three choices. I'm going to provide the choice of customer A, customer B and customer C. So in this case, we're adding what's known as metadata around the files, which allows us effectively to tag these files and provide the ability to do additional sorting and grouping. So again, with no information in there, you'll see that we get the ability to sort this, filter by and also group by customers if we want. All right, so what we can do here now is if we select a file and go into the information pane, you'll see that if we scroll down, we have uh, the option here for our customer field. So what we can do in here is we can go and select from the options that we had available to us. And let's go in and for example, select uh, another file here. So let's go in and tag this as well. All right, so we go in here and select that as customer C, close that pane and you'll see that this field is updated automatically for us. And now with that selected, we can go in and for example, group these by customer, which will now display unassigned and our two ones that we created based on this field that we added and the information we put into that entry. Now at the top here on the right, we have the ability to look at a view of our library. You'll see that we can look at it as tiles and we can go back and look at it as a list of uh, documents if we want. Now what we can also do is here, we can go in and edit the view, we can create views, we can customize that to basically suit our needs quite quickly and easily. To the right of our view options, we have a filter option here. And for example, we can filter on date, but let's say we want to look at Word and PDF documents, we can select that and that gives us a quick filtering ability if we want. And to remove that filter, we just need to select that. To clear that, select the filter pane uh, icon and that will clear that from our display as well. So in summary, what we've done here is shown you around the basics of a document library, which is the fundamental part of a SharePoint team site. You've seen how to go in and create new documents and folders to upload new folders and files here directly. You've also seen that you can work on a document simply by selecting it. And then if we want to select an individual document and go over to the details pane, we can get more information on that. You've seen how that we can select the plus option here and create an additional column to create metadata to help us describe that file and to allow us to categorize and filter that much easier. We can also select the option here to view our documents in a different form and we can customize that and update that as required to match the needs of our environment. Importantly, we've also seen how we can quickly go in and sort our columns. We've also seen how we can go in here and also group these columns. And we can also use this filter pane to quickly locate the information that we're after. So all of these features and functionalities are now available within our document libraries. Remember that in a SharePoint team site, you can create as many document libraries as you want. You can create folders inside those. And again, you can have a different look and feel and different permissions around each of them. So it gives you the maximum flexibility to go in and save your files and work with them in the way that you want.